Hey lovely people, Jonathan Matt Mendes, Painted Love and welcome to my channel. As you can see today, I'm not in my workshop, I'm having a play date at Posh Chalk Interiors Would You Bend and Solly has kindly handed me the space over and said you go and play with whatever you like. The exciting part is I'm going to be playing with a brand new Would You Bend trim which is actually one of my collection. I've been holding this back for quite a while and I'm really excited to use it. I am going to be using some of the uh, original collection today. I thought it might be really lovely to create a French panel with lots of chippy paint, uh, cracked paint, and give that wonderful aged old patina to a very simple board. So let's take a look at the products that I'm going to be using today. As you can see today, I'm working on MDF wood. Um, of course, this could be a piece of furniture, something without any detail. The wood you bends are gonna completely transform it. I've got the griddle on the go there, warming up some of the trims and wood you bends. I've been playing around with all of the different patterns just to try and make sure that I get a scape that I really love. And I'm gonna be using crackle and magic paint today, which is, um, not a first for me, um, but it is probably about the third time I've used it. So it will be kind of interesting to see how it turns out for me. So I've decided to mimic an armoire door or two doors. This probably would be a much bigger area to work with, but I'm working on the small. This is what we've got to work with today. And I'm using, Josie's behind the camera, so she's going to tell me which would you bend. Which one's this, Josie? What does it say? Ah, come on. Right, we have... 12.45, it's one of my favorite wood you bends. I've used it on my fireplace at home. I completely curved it into a circle, it's gorgeous. And I'm going with high detail at the top. When you look at French um, chateau pieces, they, they are kind of embellished more at the top and simpler at the bottom. So I've got two of these, we're gonna put these on first. We're gonna go with these first because that's my guide to where I'm gonna put everything else. So they are quite, Bend it. I might heat them up a little, a little bit more, just quickly, and get some glue on them. So guys, you know how I love to risk it for a biscuit. Um, this is just a sample board. I would maybe take a little bit more time over this and mark things out. I will probably use a pencil at some point and mark out some areas. But first up, I know that this is the main trim, so it's going on first. This is where I get a little bit gunked up. I'm using my finger. You could use a brush. I really like the connection between using your hands to work with, something special about just getting in. That's that one. And, you, and I'm doing both at the same time because if you work next to each other, you can see your balance with the two sides of the cupboard door. All right, let's see which way around this one goes. That one's going there. I'm gonna quickly pop them on. <laughs> That's wrong. That's the way it goes that way right we're gonna bend this slightly at the top so it's cooling down let's get some more heat on it right we can slight i want to turn that end up and i'm positioning I know, I'm kind of looking at each side. I'm gonna press down. I know it looks a hot mess. This can all be cleaned up. But to be fair, I'm not going for a clean look anyway. So that one can go there. We'll heat up the other one again. And then we'll t clean up the edges. Ah! 
I'm concentrating on this end because that's the only piece that I kind of need to flip up. So I'm lining the two up. I'm keeping an inch away from each edge. That feels good. I'm doing it all by eye. They're very forgiving anyway, so you can play around with them if you're not happy. An inch from that edge, an inch from that edge. Right, I'm happy with that. Here's where I'm probably gonna bring the pencil in. I've got these other two pieces here, and I think they will really work well in the corners. I'm not quite which, sure which orientation we're gonna go with, maybe that way. I don't want to make it too heavy on this side. French armoire doors, there usually is a lot of heavy detail at the top and very simple detail at the bottom. So I'm gonna use these ones again. I don't know what, yes, I do know which one it is. This is um, 13, 15. Lovely little um, trim, simple and gorgeous. So they're gonna go there and there and we're gonna interconnect with my Would You Bend. It's a very simple one. So let's get these marked out we'll get all of the areas marked out and then we'll put the straights in and then we should be good to go so there's loads of guesstimation in my work honestly guys if you feel the need to actually measure things go for it I suppose today is just a fact-finding mission on some of the products that I've not used before. Um, I would maybe spend a little bit more time on this, but not today, just a play day. these on the griddle. The griddle's not piping, but by the time I get there, it'll be warm. Oh, I don't need to. I've just opened another packet, just <laughs> to boot. Actually, why not? I'm thinking here, if you look at this wood you bend, there's a lovely little curly sort of C shape at the bottom. We can cut through this and use the top out for another piece. Why not if we add a little C shape on one side, just there to make a connection on all four corners. I think that'd be really lovely. We might even flip it the other way. Let's heat, heat one up and we'll take off the excess. Well, if they're uh, once they're cooled down, we can sand it to make it more rounded. For now, can we see? I've lost that bit and we've gained that bit. So let's see how that looks. I think that would look really quite nice just on that corner. I'm using a small bit of sandpaper just to soften the edges. This will really make it look like it appears to be as it was made. So I'm rounding the edge, softening the edge just a little bit just to kind of fashion it back into that brand new shape that feels really good nice and smooth we'll do the other one so it means that your cuts don't have to be fabulous 
you can really play around with these, they're really cool. Just a little bit of sanding. And we have two brand new pieces ready for the corners to go there and there. All that's left to do now is add the straight runs with my, mm, I'm so excited about this guys, I'm gonna show you close up. Look at this trim. Now you're looking at that and thinking, of all the trims, why would Jonathan choose this one to be made? Now, I'm a big one for always allowing beauty to stand out. Now, of course, there's lo I could have gone around this um, whole board with the same trim or a different one that's really elaborate, but sometimes you need to put something that's kind of simple. And this is a really simple trim that I think will really work with the other trim. So this is why I wanted a really plain would you then, and I've got it, so I'm super happy. I've heated up the trim and stretched it out and I've cut them slightly longer than what was actually needed. The reason for this was so that I could go back and make the finer detail cuts around the decorative mouldings at the top and bottom. Um, what I would say with this trim is follow your guideline. It is less forgiving because there's less detail on it, but it does look absolutely amazing once down. So covering off the connections between, there's quite a gap. So I'm going to be using Posh Chuck's Flexible Paste. Now, this is used for all manner of things. Most of Posh Chuck interior products, they have multiple uses. This is um, a paste, you could use it as raised stenciling, but what I'm going to do is take a little palette knife and fill my gaps. I'm going to take a little bit, oh, it's a lovely consistency, isn't it? It's kind of, Again, no rhyme or reason. I'm just gonna pop it in and probably smudge it in with my finger. That feels good. Just adds a little bit of, a little bit like corking the edges. I'm using a palette knife because it's a bit more directional. Again, no rhyme or reason. It doesn't have to be perfect. There's gonna be lots of paint over this. It just adds that little bit of finesse to the overall look. And all of the connections kind of make sense then. It's now the exciting part. We're on to paint. I'm really happy with the layout of my Would You Bends. I think they really do kind of look French inspired at least. Uh, I've chosen to go with La Magic Paint and this is Sunset Blue. It's a really gorgeous kind of rich blue. Um, and we're gonna just put two coats on this, just two really heavy coats, and then we're gonna do some crackle and add some other colors and see where it, it takes us beyond that. So let's crack on with the Sunset Blue. Look at that, guys. Absolutely gorgeous. It's kind of got a, a greeny hue to it as well. And all I'm gonna do is just load the brush up and everything is gonna get painted all over the trims. This is where the magic really happens. Um, when you cover out all of the details, it becomes consolidated as one. It becomes one panel. Um, I love this part of the process. Adding the paint is really special.
Oh, that's beautiful. I thought blue, white, beige colors are gonna be really good for French looking um, projects. I think they really work. This is gonna sit right underneath Crackle. So we're not gonna see much of this. We may distress back to it, um, but other than that, it's gonna be hidden away deep underneath the other layers of paint. The two base coats of um, Sunset Blue are now thoroughly dry and I'm going to move on to a product that I absolutely love, it's Magic Crackle. Now I have done lots of tutorials on lots of different brands of Crackle, now this one is very interesting because it's a one step Crackle. So the premise is that you paint a darker colour, you apply your Crackle and then you add your next layer of paint and then it will crack over time. You can use a little bit of heat or you can let it um, naturally dry over time. So I'm not gonna do the whole area. There's, a, there's an opportunity here just to be more directional about the way I'm gonna apply this. I'm gonna think about where natural wear and tear might be on the cupboard door, which is um, now fashioned in with the wood you bend. So let's get stuck in. So I'm going to give you an idea. The consistency is kind of goopy, quite goopy. It's really interesting stuff. There we go. And like I said, I'm going to do some of the edges. And I'm going to do thick and thin. I'm just going to do some down the edges. All around the edge, just a little fringe around the edge, here and there. But some places not. Maybe a bit down here. A little bit in there. Maybe in the corner. Um, maybe a larger area through here. So when applying, kind of think thick and thin areas. We don't need to, and you can kind of cross hatch. It's pretty much similar to many of the other brands that you know. A little bit there and then a fraction up here. Maybe we'll put a little bit on the wood you bend up here. But definitely around some of these edges. Right, let's move on to the other door. I'm going to try to place these in slightly different areas. this side right into that crevice all of the um, crackle has now dried thoroughly and i'm moving on to my final finished coat and i've decided to go with two colors one of which is delice and the other one is enjoy which i'm going to use the enjoy which is slightly darker to the outside edge i'm going to pop in the delice in the middle and kind of blend away i'm going to throw the paint on guys it's not there's no correct science to this i'm just going to have fun and see where it takes me oh look at those two colors together beautiful absolutely beautiful it's a long time since i've used a color that's kind of creamy in its tone so here goes wish me luck guys wish me luck throw the paint on around the edges and i'm going to go over the edges of the uh, moldings i'm not going to worry about that we're going to go slightly into the edges if I miss any around the edges, I'll go back and tidy that up because that'll be solid colour. 
straight in quite a healthy amount through there it's quite warm in the workshop today so this paint will dry rather quickly Make sure I'm getting into all of the detail. I can see it cracking already, that's amazing. It's pretty quick. So that's why I'm throwing the paint on. I don't want to over work over the crackles. Just trying to make sure that all of my blue's gone pretty quickly. A little bit extra here. And then I'm gonna jump in with a clean brush with the paler tone. Lots of paint in here. Look at that cracking, guys. It's already cracking. And it's kind of be, going to be a soft blend. I'm trying not to overwork too much. I'm going to go over that edge. It will be what it will be. The trick with this crackle is speed and a soft brush for blending. If you agitate it a little too much, it will kind of blister, but some of those blisters really do add to its character. So don't worry, just go with it. Feel the confidence and go with it. It will turn out absolutely beautiful. So I'm super, super happy with the cracking and the distressing and the cruddy bits, it looks amazing. I'm gonna do just a few more things. One is to add some gold to the trim, Byzantine gold, it's my favorite. And also we're gonna add a little keyhole, a key escutcheon, which is another posh chuck, uh, would you bend product. So let's take a look at the options. We have one, that's quite, quite cute, simple. You know me, I like to keep it simple. That could be a possibility. Um, this is another one, but I think for this size of door, maybe too big, but I love it, absolutely love it. What else have we got? We've got sideway keyholes. These are great for um, chest of drawers, in the middle of chest of drawers, somewhere that sits there. And we have got one flying in from the other side of the room. This one, kind of a little bit of a love heart shape, beautiful. I wonder which one I'm gonna go for. What else have we got? We've got, oh, that's beautiful as well. Simple, that one, really simple. And I think, could this be the one? Could that be the one? I'm torn between one of two. The simple one, really simple. Let's get this the right way up. So that one, or that one. Mmm, decisions. Let's see which we're gonna go for. Um, I think that's kind of more French inspired but I like the simplicity of that one. So it might be that one, who knows? Or maybe that one, I'm not sure. So let's just um, get some gold on the trims and then we can move on to waxing and adding a little bit more distress to this. And then we'll finally finish with a beautiful keyhole. Okay guys, I've opened this one. I've changed my mind, it looks great. We, and I was gonna put it on the actual panel, but I think it needs to sit inside. That's where a keyhole would sit. I'm gonna do it quite low. Um, they will go on as the final flourish to the whole um, finished product. Let's get some Byzantine gold on. So I'm working with my very favorite pigment, which is uh, Byzantine gold. I love this gold. It's kind of really like an old gold. I'm gonna just pop a little bit out. We'll go three big scoops. I can always go back for more. And then we're gonna take the infuser. I'm 
So once again, no rhyme or reason, I'm just gonna touch over the edges. I'm not gonna worry about going right up to the edge because we're gonna add some waxes that'll cover up the connection. I'm just gonna add it here, there and everywhere. Don't forget we want this to look really aged. So if you miss a bit, don't worry. See, I've got a little bit in there. I'm not gonna worry about that. That'll be covered with dark wax. Straight over the brand new wood you bend. It's looking splendid. We've got a little Fedra in the workshop. She's been keeping me company under, under this table. She sleeps and then all of a sudden she wanders off. Very nice. See that little bit of crud there, beautiful. I'm gonna leave it in because it's gonna add to the overall finished results. Little tickle here and there. Okay, another layer of distressing. Now this is probably one of my signature um, techniques. I love using it. I'm gonna use a little bit of fly spec. I've got a little stencil brush here. And we're gonna go with the color Vintage, which is kind of a chocolatey dark brown. I'm just gonna pop a little bit of paint into a container. And then I'm gonna use my atomizer just to loosen that paint a little bit because it doesn't want to be solid paint because it will not flick off the brush. So we're just gonna loosen that paint up. You can see there, it kind of just softens. I'm gonna have a little practice run. I've not used this brush. I would always say when doing this, take a bit of cardboard, work somewhere else. So I'm just gonna offload. I'm just gonna have a little flick here. Yeah, it's kind of, I think a little bit more paint back in there. It, it is a feel thing, so Getting the right consistency is really important. So I think that's gonna be good. I'm, and I'm not gonna cover the whole thing. I've got a lovely dead space here. So I'm gonna do some in here. I'm just gonna lean above and add, this is called fly spec. So it's really, and there's the fly. How, how interesting, the fly's just flown through. So fly spec, the reason it's called fly spec, it is, you're gonna smile now, it's fly excrement. On lots of old pieces of furniture, um, flies do their poopies and leave these marks. Definitely on traditional furniture, on wooden furniture, if you look closely, you will see these little anomalies everywhere. So this is a lovely way of just bedding in. Some people say it looks like woodworm holes, but the true thing behind it is fly excrement. Right, so a little bit of a mistake there. I'm not gonna worry about it. I've got a brush. I'm gonna take that off. No love lost there. This is gonna be all dark waxed in a moment. So don't worry about those things. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit in the middle, I think. Just a little fraction. Don't cover the whole piece because it will get a little bit gunked up and not good. It confuses your eye. You don't know where to look on the piece. It really adds that extra bit of age. Whilst I had the gold pigment out, I decided to paint the Kia escutcheons. Also, I used the vintage paint to make a dark mark where these keyholes were to go so it looked dark in the internal part. 
then applied some more glue, placed into position and left to dry. So we're now at the final stages, my very favourite part. We're going to be using a mixture of waxes. I'm going to be using clear wax from Posh Chalk. We're going to give it a whole coat of wax everywhere. And then we're going to use some dark wax. I'm going to be really heavy with my dark wax. I'm not going to be frightened. I'm going to be heavy with everything, actually. Um, it's going to just be covered everywhere. This will give me a little bit of freedom um, when it comes to playing around with the other waxes that I'm going to use. I think we're going to be using a little bit of magic wax and some patinas, I think. Right, healthy amount. I'm going to offload a little bit with a cloth. I've got my cloth here. Just so... It just covers every surface. There's something offloading on that cloth. I don't know what it is, but I'm not going to worry about it because it's going to get dirty. Right, the best part. Right, we're going to use, this one is La Magic. And it's a dark wax. I've got the big brush again. We're going to be really heavy. Load up the brush. everywhere. Into all of the details, I'm going to cover all of them up. Smells lovely. Up here, I'll leave a little bit of dead space in the middle. You can always take a bit off if you don't like it. Yes, it looks criminal. I know that it's really scary when you do this. Don't fear. Just start offloading. It will change the colour. It's meant to change the colour. I'm going to pop some more clear just around the edges. This will give me freedom. clean off what we don't want. You can see instant age. It sits into all of the wood you bends, perfect for this job. And all of those textures in the paint, awesome. It comes back. And you can take off as much as you like. So you're happy with the color that you've got. I'm gonna pop a little bit more Clear, it will give you more freedom. Look, you can take it a bit lighter if we want it lighter. As simple as that. Look at all of that texture, beautiful texture in those connections without any effort. That wasn't me, that was the products. Um, like I said earlier on, don't fear. Allow those anomalies to be there. It's part of what makes it look so beautiful in the end. Simple as that. Now we have that chateau relic from a flat piece of wood right the way through to true faded grandeur. So this is truly the final flourish. I'm really highlighting a shadow in. I'm using posh chalk patina. This is in, in, in black. It's a real dark just along there and softening in. It's more of a shadow line really. And it helps with the connection. You know, when you've 
painted and you've got a poor connection, this really helps disguise anything that's not particularly good. I'm gonna go right down there. I know that I slipped with my paintwork, so we can hide that. Is heavier or is light as you like with this? It, it's up to you. I really love it. I'm just pop some along that bottom edge. Remember, clear wax removes any sort of dark wax. You can play around with that. A real lovely highlighted shadow. And we'll do a little, we're gonna go in there because that needs a little bit. And then we'll go down the outside edge, just here and there. Maybe a bit there. Where does um, dirt and grime gather sort of in the crevices? So that is just about it. I want to show you now the difference between the two. You could keep it fresh. You could just clear wax and a little bit of um, a darker in the crevice like we've just added. But I quite like that heavy, dark, grungy feel to this Chateau look. Another little tip. You can bring back some of the lighter tones. This will add sort of another, because there's texture in here, watch this. You can see all of the texture. If I take a little bit of light sandpaper, now we're gonna get little white anomalies here, there and everywhere. It just adds another layer of interest. A more kind of patina to the surface. We're gonna do a little bit up here as well. I'm just going for the areas that I know that's kind of quite bobbly in my texture. Nothing more. Bit of texture there. Basically, pick out your favourite bits of texture. And that adds a real another layer of... Lightly does it. For my final distressing technique, I decided to knock back the Byzantine gold with a little bit of fine grit sandpaper just to slightly scuff sand the edges here and there. But that's about it for today's tutorial, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed this. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, a like, or even a comment. I'll do my best to answer any questions. Thank you for joining me today. I'll catch you all next time. Base coat of the um, oh, come on, child, start again. Apply.
apply this and then put your top coat over the top and you will get crackles. So I'm not gonna do the whole piece. I mean, there's... Uh, oh, come on, the two base coats of paint are now thoroughly dry and I'm gonna move on to another product that I absolutely love. <coughs> so... <laughs> you can keep on filming, I'll just correct myself. Three, two, one. Oh, you're still filming, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now it's time. To... <laughs> Get rid of all of this. That again. Is, um, enjoy. So let's enjoy applying these coats of paint. I've got my posh chalk brushes, and we've. What are the brushes called, Jonathan? Posh. Would you bend? Are the would you bend? The posh chalk. The brand is posh chalk. Oh, yeah. But the type of brushes would you bend so you can get into all the nooks and crannies of oh, the would you bend. Oh, is that why you call them would you bend? Yeah. See, I'm learning, guys. Would you bend by posh chalk, too many names, confusing. <laughs> um, right, I'll start again. All the crackle is... <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> right. Are you filming? Are you filming? I don't know. <laughs> I to stop crunching. <laughs> Ready? Ready. Now? I'm still filming. Oh, great. Do you want me, let me stop. So we're now at the final stages. My absolute favourite using a mixture of waxes. First up, we're going to use Posh Chalk. Um, start again. I don't know. <laughs> Why am I looking there? <laughs> <laughs> Too many cameras! Too many cameras!